Pouring a concrete slab is a great way to build your shed floor. Today we're going to show you how to pour and finish a concrete slab and footing for your storage shed. Setting up to pour the concrete is one of the most important steps in getting the perfect slab. After deciding where you want the shed, you will need to move compactable soil or gravel to form the bottom side of the slab and footings. The concrete footing around the edges of the slab under the walls of the shed will be 8 to 12 inches deep at a minimum. Check with your local building department to see what they recommend for your climate and soil conditions. The thicker concrete around the perimeter is called the footing and the 4 inch thick concrete across the top is called the slab. The slab and footing are poured at the same time. This is called a monolithic pour. You will excavate or add soil to within about 3.5 to 4 inches of the top of the finished slab elevation. The earth that you pour concrete on must be undisturbed or compacted. So if you move any soil, you will need to compact it using a compactor. Compactors can be rented at a local tool rental store. Once the ground level gets close to the proper height, you are ready to set the form boards. Using one of the long walls, Hammer a stake into the ground next to the edge of the box, and then lift the box to its proper elevation and nail the stake to the side of the box. Continue setting stakes down the length of the board and level the board as you go. Then square up the other long wall by measuring the diagonal lengths of the frame box and moving the other edge of the box until the diagonals across the box are the same. Raise the second long wall so that all four sides of the form are level and set stakes on the second long wall. Then attach the stakes to the form boards. When you are finished with the two long walls you will set stakes on the two shorter walls to keep them from moving. Rebar is set in the concrete to strengthen it. You should put two one half inch bars around the footing and if you want to make the slab extra strong you can put rebar or welded wire mesh in the slab. The two footing bars are set in the footing so that they have a minimum of at least three inches of concrete coverage on all sides to give them the most strength. Overlap the ends of the rebar by at least 24 inches and tie the ends together using rebar tying wire. The rebar will be lifted off the ground once it is buried in the concrete. The final step before the concrete is poured is to mark the locations of the anchor bolts on the form boards. Double check with the shed floor plans to verify door locations and wall stud layout. You are now ready to pour the concrete. Begin pouring the concrete at the farthest point away from the concrete truck and then back the truck away from the pour and continue pouring as it backs away. Make sure to pour only enough concrete to fill the forms to the top. Concrete is very heavy and hard to move around after it hits the ground. Concrete truck drivers are typically very good at judging how much concrete to send down the chute, but you still need to communicate how quickly you want it to come out of the truck. Use a concrete rake or flat nose shovel to move the concrete around and begin to level out the high and low spots. Do not use a garden rake because the tines on the rake will separate the rocks from the cream and this unevenness in the mix makes the concrete weaker. Remember to lift the rebar into the concrete as it is buried. The two pieces of rebar should be about 4 inches or more apart and 3 inches from the top and bottom. After a few feet of the forms are filled, have the truck stop so you can screed the top. Set a straight board that is long enough to reach across the slab on the form boards and begin pulling the little bit of concrete off the top of the slab. Moving the board across the surface gets the top of the slab level with the top of the form boards and consolidates the concrete. Consolidating is the process of vibrating concrete so that air and rock pockets are eliminated from the laid concrete. Consolidating also brings the cream of the concrete to the surface and up against the form boards to aid in producing a better finish. Tilt the board a bit and pull it toward yourself. Always keep a little bit of concrete in front of the screed board so it will fill any dips in the concrete and make it flatter. 
It helps to have someone behind you raking the built-up pile of concrete away from the face of the screed board. Sometimes a gandy is used to consolidate concrete, but with smaller slabs, the screed board works great. The edges of the slab are consolidated by tapping the sides of the form boards with a hammer. If the edges of the forms are bowing, you can use a kicker board or a stake to straighten it out. It is easier to do this before pouring the concrete, but we did it the hard way, after. Continue pouring the concrete out and filling the form until it is full. Immediately after screeding, use a bull float or darby to further level the surface of the concrete out. A bull float is a large trowel on a long pole. It is typically 4 feet long. A darby is a long wooden trowel, 24 to 36 inches long. Both tools can be rented from a local tool rental store. Using a bull float or darby takes out many of the high and low spots in the concrete and pushes the aggregate down into the concrete to begin creating a smooth surface. Push and pull the float across the concrete surface and watch as it levels it out. Do not work the surface too much. If you work the surface too much, you can seal it. You do not want the surface to seal yet. That will come later as you trowel the surface with steel trowels. Keep the tool as flat as possible when moving it across the surface. This is another trick to keep the surface open and not sealed. Use the bull float in two directions perpendicular to each other across the slab to get the surface as even as possible. Use the darby to level the slab around the form edges where using the bull float does not work. If you find a spot that is a bit high or low, use the darby or bull float to mow it down or fill it up. The surface of the concrete should look flat, but have a rough finish with lots of tiny holes showing. You should stop using the bull float when the water comes to the surface. The anchor bolts are installed immediately after the surface is bull floated. Push the bolts into the concrete about 2 inches from the edge of the concrete at each of the marks you made earlier. If the surface gets messed up, you can use the trowel to smooth out around the bolt. The bolt should have about 2.5 inches showing above the surface of the slab. Stick the bolts into the concrete and then shake them to get the concrete to consolidate around the bolt. This is important to make the bolts secure. You now need to let the slab sit a bit until the surface water leaves the top of the slab. This is called bleeding. If you work the surface before the bleeding has evaporated, you risk the chance of the concrete blistering or crazing or delaminating. Be careful though, because hot temperatures or windy conditions can speed up the evaporation and lead you to believe that the bleeding has stopped, when in fact it is not. If conditions are hot or windy, it is recommended to cover a test area of the slab with plastic and watch for the bleeding to stop under the plastic. Another test to see if it has set enough to be finished is to step on the slab and check the footprint. The concrete slab is ready when standing on the slab makes a 1 8 inch to 1 quarter inch footprint on the surface. Start using an edger to work the edges of the concrete just before the bleeding stops. Start on the edges of the concrete that are the most set up and work your way around the slab. Use the mag trowel to work a bit of cream to the surface along the edge and then use the edger to smooth the cream into the rounded shape. Use a smooth back and forth motion until you get a smooth rounded edge without rocks showing. Then clean up the edger trowel marks using the mag trowel. Any slabs of concrete that are larger than 10 feet, 
we'll need a joint installed on the concrete to help control where the slab cracks. You should use a groover that makes a joint that is about one quarter the thickness of the slab. So for a three and a half inch to four inch thick slab, the groover should be at least three quarters of an inch thick. Use a string line to snap a line on the surface of the slab and then follow the line using the groover. Sometimes the gravel rolls up. Just remove it and keep working the joint. The cream will come to the surface and it will smooth out. If you don't like the large indent that the groover makes, you can hire a concrete saw cutter to make a cut in the concrete the day after it is poured. This is the preferred method if you are going to install carpet on the shed floor. After the bleeding stops on the surface of the concrete, you will finish the concrete using a magnesium trowel and a steel trowel. First, rub the surface with the magnesium trowel using a back and forth scrubbing motion. This will further flatten the surface and the rigid edge of the trowel will bring the cream to the surface. This cream makes it easier to make the surface a little flatter and allows for a tighter and smoother concrete finish with very few air holes. Immediately after bringing the cream up with the mag trowel, you will use the steel trowel to finish the surface of the concrete. The steel trowel will make the surface even smoother and further closes the tiny air holes and seals the surface. Rub the surface in a half moon motion from side to side until the surface is smooth and all the trowel marks are gone. One pass with the magnesium trowel and another pass with the steel trowel are typically enough for a storage shed floor. On the left side of the screen you can see the rougher bull floated finish and on the right you can see how using the mag trowel and the steel trowel makes a smoother and tightly sealed finish. Curing the concrete is an important step that sometimes gets overlooked. Slowing the evaporation of water from the concrete improves the strength of the concrete. About 12 hours after pouring the concrete you can spray it with a light mist and cover it with plastic to slow the water from evaporating. The form boards around the edge of the shed may be removed the day after the concrete is poured. Continue learning about shed building by clicking on one of these videos. Thanks for watching.